Welcome, um, everybody, um, uh, to this uh, Catalyst 2030 session. Um, uh, it's great to see you all. Um, if you can have a look just at the slide, it would be great if people could uh, put themselves on mute, please. Um, um, the, the, the agenda uh, will allow plenty of time for discussion with uh, uh, everybody later on. So um, the session has been recorded. Keep the camera on, please, if you can. We're going to have a question answer session later on, but you can put these in the chat um, and we will um, distribute the slides and the recording um, afterwards. Um, as far as I'm concerned, this is a, a, an important uh, a, a meeting today. Um, it's uh, the latest report that's been prepared by Catalyst 2030 on the subject of government and uh, how government can work with uh, social entrepreneurs uh, going forward to achieve the uh, system change that, that, that we, we want. So it's a very, very important area. Um, and the report's now almost ready to, to come out. And um, Catalyst 2030 has this kind of way of working whereby um, we, what we call it's an expert session. Um, and um, so the report is put to forward to experts who, who have their view on what the report is and how we might, might go. So really looking forward to some input here from, 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 from our speakers who I'll introduce in, in a moment. Um, so the idea is then we, we hear from the, the experts, um, then we can have some discussion, chat, questions, and hopefully enhance where we're going forward in the material going forward. This is the first of three uh, expert sessions, and we have some, some great uh, speakers. The way we're going to line up then is that um, in the moment, uh, Katharina Wagner, who's the engagement manager at McKinsey's, is going to, to talk. She's been coordinating, writing the report, um, and is going to, to give background to where we're at uh, at the moment. And then we have um, three experts um, who are going to join us in, 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 in a discussion. Uh, Carol van der Poorten, uh, Philip Almedia, Leslie Udwin. And they have different perspectives. Um, as you can see from the slide, uh, Carol is a policy officer uh, for social economy at the European Commission. Uh, Philippe is president of the Portugal Social Innovation and Leslie's founder of Think Equal. So have very different types of expertise and um, uh, ex uh, uh, um, insights here into, the, into this uh, whole area. So we look forward to that discussion a little uh, later. But in the meantime, uh, let me now hand over to Katarina, who's going to give us a bit of background and update to where we are on the report. Um, um, Katarina, over to you. Fantastic. Thank you, Mel, and great to be here. Lovely to see all of you. Um, so let me just say a few words on what this report is, because really it is um, quite a um, massive effort in collaboration, as you can see from the logos at the bottom. So it's um, a collaborative effort between Ashoka, Catalyst 2030, and some of the funders behind Catalyst 2030, including Equian Green, the Skoll Foundation, and the Schwab Foundation for Social Entrepreneurship. And we as McKinsey have had the pleasure of facilitating the process of um, getting everyone's input and um, shaping that into the report that we are going to publish officially in January. But um, I think all of you will be able to receive a preprint version as soon as our layout is finished. So it's certain that should be happening sometime end of this week, maybe early next week. Um, what have we looked at? <clears throat> so our report, um, can we stay on the first page? <laughs> Thank you. Um, just go back one. Um, we've looked at, or we've had conversations with experts um, from the social sector and from governments. We've had more than 50 interviews with um, government representatives, sector experts, and we've conducted multiple focus groups um, with the same group of people that have shared their expertise. And through all of these conversations, we've been able to um, collect more than 35 examples that actually have made it into the report. And I think in total, we've probably looked at more than 50 case examples of successful collaborations between governments and social entrepreneurs. Now, what we found in all of these conversations is basically a pattern emerging of different areas in which government can act to foster collaboration with social entrepreneurs. 
Um, before we look at these in detail, let me just say, I think we're flipping through pages here. Can we go back? Yeah, awesome. Um, so before, before we dive into these five areas for a second, let me just say that we focused on social entrepreneurs that take a systemic angle. So take a structural perspective at what are the underlying causes of societal issues that we see and what needs to, be, to happen to address these. So a little bit different from just direct relief work, which is also certainly necessary, but has a slightly different twist. And here it's especially important that we see that collaboration between governments and social entrepreneurs. Now, that said, um, these five areas can basically be divided in, um, in three factors that you could think of like input factors to the production function of social entrepreneurs, right? So the first one there is information where on the one hand, if we have more open information that governments are willing to share, social entrepreneurs have a better perspective on where exactly the issues are that they care about um, and they can target their own efforts better. At the same time, social entrepreneurs can also work as um, basically facilitators for data collection for government agencies because a lot of times it's difficult for governments to collect sensitive data, say for example on corruption, directly. And here, social entrepreneurs are, um, can be great allies to facilitate that and to generate data from the public. Um, the second element that we've looked at is capability building and here we again have sort of that drive on, on the one hand, um, Certainly, um, there are capabilities that are not as common in public administrations. For example, when we're looking at um, co-creation and design thinking and systemic elements um, that may not be as present or as prominent in, uh, in the current staff that we see in public administration. And at the same time, we have um, social entrepreneurs that from based on the skills that they start with, may need to learn new things and may need to adapt their way of working when they start working with the administration. So on these both sides, the skill building. And then looking at funding models, that's something that we've looked at in detail in a previous report called Embracing Complexity. Here, the main message is a lot of the current funding models we see are very short term and very output oriented. So that makes it difficult for social entrepreneurs that have a very systemic perspective because what they're doing just takes a lot longer and um, is rarely feasible in just a short-term project funding. So here, um, the call to action would be to look at these funding models and make sure that full scale from very short-term to really long-term funding and different types of funding are available to social entrepreneurs. Now, Moving on to the enablers, so the ones that you see in that light blue on the right hand side. So these two are action areas that can take the inputs that certainly need to be there to the next level. And these are <laughs> probably but obviously um, collaboration and institutionalization. So when we talk about collaboration, what we found is, first of all, that there is the need for more collaboration within sectors, both in the social sector and in the private, in the in the public sector, as well as probably in the private sector, um, but also between sectors. And here, what um, what we would uh, recommend, or what one of the findings in the report was that it's helpful to have profiles, talent profiles, that have experience in all the different sectors to um, allow these, uh, these colleagues to be translators that can, first of all, draw on their networks in all sectors that they have experience in and that they can help their colleagues in whichever sector we're talking about, for example, in the public sector, translate what the social sector people are talking about um, and translate back the other way around. Um, another option here would be to create high level one-stop um, contact points for social entrepreneurs because sometimes they find it a bit difficult to find the right counterpart in an application and might get stuck somewhere. So these are just two glimpses of, of suggestions that we're outlining in the report. And finally, institutionalization. So when we talk about institutionalization, we essentially mean um, how does a good idea and new social innovation become permanent? 
And uh, in collaboration with governments, that might mean that there's a policy change or that governments include the innovation in a new or existing um, government program, or that there's maybe a permanent collaboration or um, partnership between a government and a social entrepreneur. Um, so here, a couple of things. Thank you. Thank you. Um, a couple of things to look at might be first involving governments early on in the process of developing solutions, because um, basically the worst that can happen is that there is a finished product, a finished service, a finished solution, and then social entrepreneurs approach government and say, you know what, we would like you to implement this. It's a lot easier when there's an ongoing conversation and both sides get to shape that approach and the solution early on. Um, and we provide a couple of examples of what that could look like. And then um, the second part to that might be having clearer paths to institutionalization in the sense that um, civil servants in all parts of governments are aware of what the available tools are and how these could be used and in, in which cases these might be appropriate, right? Because social entrepreneurs might have a certain perspective on what they would like to see. And if there is no clarity on, on the counterpart side on what's possible and what's maybe not possible, um, that again tends to innovations getting stuck somewhere in the system. And the more clarity we have, the easier that, that tends to be. So this is just a little glimpse of what we've found in our conversations. And I think with that, I'll pause here and hand over back to Mel. Thank you very much, uh, Katerina. Um, for that summation, um, it's, a, it's a, a, a big report. So to be able to kind of capture it in those few minutes is, uh, is great, so well done. So thank you for that. We'll be able to come back to Katerina if there's any questions or points in the discussion, but I'd like now to turn to our expert panel. I understand that Philippe might be uh, struggling to join us at the moment, uh, but we have two other experts here anyway, so that's brilliant. If I could maybe turn to you first, Carl. Um, what, what, what is your first impressions of the report read through? Um, uh, is, is it in the right space? Is this an exciting uh, development? What's, what's your uh, view from, from your side? I'd be fascinated to hear. I'm on mute. Yeah, okay, this works perfect. Um, first of all, thank you very much for um, in, inviting me. Um, I, I will first maybe shortly present myself. I'm Karen van der Poorsen. I work for the European Commission uh, DG Grow, specifically uh, on the topic of social economy within the social economy unit uh, of Grow. Uh, we work very closely together with our colleagues of DG, uh, DG Employment. Um, uh, and one of the most important aspects is, of course, the social economy action plan. So in this regard, we uh, very much welcome uh, input uh, from the sector, civil society, social economy organizations, uh, etc., uh, in as uh, to provide input in the preparation of this action plan, because we are now fully in in this exercise where we reach out to partners, where we um, have thematic uh, discussions, uh, where we have public consultancy, etc. So a report like this is very. Uh, interesting. I, I will not go in detail on, on, on every aspect of the of the the, the report, um, but but two um, things that um, I would like to highlight. Uh, first, I will not speak, for example, about um, uh, the development of funding models because I think that um, there the Commission has very extensively worked uh, around specific uh, funding instruments directly for social entrepreneurs. Such, such as the easy fund and many um, decentralized calls under the ESF, but also indirectly, there are many, many uh, examples of, of funding models that support uh, social entrepreneurs. Um, what I would like to highlight is, is really this importance of collaboration, of course, um, but I will tell you more about how we see this and how we should promote this at the European level, but also this open information. Um, this is especially in terms of social economy, for me, a crucial aspect. Um, if we, we have discussions about the concept of social economy, social entrepreneurship, uh, people always ask me, yeah, what is for you the exact definition? And then people come with, um, let's say, concepts like uh, membership, um, social impact, 
um, where you have a collective initiative and so on, an asset lock maybe in your business model, um, you serve for the society or for a group of members. Et so all these very known characteristics of what a social enterprise might be or how a social economy organization might be organized. Um, but what for me is always forgotten in, in this uh, context is, is really like openness and transparency. I think that is one key characteristic that many social entrepreneurs have in common because they don't have necessarily the ambition to protect uh, their product development to protect, for example, a patent, they want more to have it spread around, they want to have it copied, they want to have as much as possible duplication of what social innovation, what innovation, what invention they have made to serve the society. So this, this notion of open information of transparency is for me a very important characteristic of social economy, which is most of the time not even mentioned or very much underestimated. Um, to give you one example how this is um, might be reflected, for example, in the social economy action plan or how uh, social entrepreneurs served uh, during the COVID-19 crisis, specifically society in this openness, is the movement of, of um, the commons. Uh, you have uh, physical creative commons, for example, which are usually organized at a very local, small community level, but now you have also the digital commons. In the COVID-19 crisis, we have seen um, within our working grow that many, um, let's say, digital comment activists or people who are programming, who are developing specific application software models to support enterprises, for example, to get their business model in a more commercial online identity, but also just applications to figure out where uh, the COVID-19 um, uh, spread is, is most urgent in a country, etc. So all these type of online open uh, open source and, and open software uh, possibilities were showcased during this, this uh, crisis. And I think that is a very strong business model because the business model is not, for example, on the data itself, but the business model is built around the service. And there um, we see a lot of beautiful social innovations appearing, which are really touching up on the heart of social economy. Um, that is one thing about this, this, this open openness of information, this, uh, let's say, uh, access to information that you want to share as much as possible instead of creating small silos where you have a lot of protective behavior. Uh, the second one is collaboration. There we see that co collaboration for us, we really want to promote collaboration at a local level where you have, again, you break down the silos, you want um, we want to foster, for example, collaboration, not only within the social economy um, area, we want to break open towards civil society, but also towards, uh, for example, uh, regular enterprises towards the government, that you all buy yourself in, in, in so, some kind of a joint local strategy for uh, more jobs, for example, for more inclusion, for better social services, et cetera, et cetera. One example how we work within the commission on this is, is on uh, clusters. We all know probably competitive clusters, which are invented to improve the competitiveness of a certain sector, an industrial sector, uh, through a cluster. But now we also are trying to do some research on clusters of social innovation and clusters of ecological innovation. We see that specifically social economy actors are drivers of such clusters. They bring a group of entities together, so enterprises research, government, but also civil society for this joint local strategy, for example, to provide more crop, more jobs, more green jobs, for more local uh, energy production, and so on and so forth. So these are very important local aspects of collaboration. For us, for the Commission, it's of course a question how we bring this in relation with other ecosystems around. So we want to bring to build a lot of bridges uh, between countries, between regions, cross border, cross regional, but also for, to the other side of Europe, because that is really the strength. If you have an invention at this, or a social innovation or a certain business model that serves a lot or a specific construction of an ecosystem that might be very interesting to copy or to adapt to another context in another country. Um, so this is another very important point of the report that touches up, up a lot upon what we are doing um, with many of our projects. So I, I think it's, it's, it's really important to further um, collaborate on this and also to use the intel that you provided thanks to the report uh, for our work in the social economy action plan. I will keep it uh, like that for here so maybe we can follow up with more questions but I would also like to hear the other speakers. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for that Carl. That's, uh... A really fascinating insight um, um you know collaboration obviously from social 
entrepreneur's point of view is absolutely crucial and openness all, all the time. Uh, I guess the question really is how, how does one um, grow this to be so that you're coming, you're getting systemic change that we, we, we so want so we can achieve the SGPs. That's the challenge and you're hitting on that by using the example of potential uh, clusters and so on. Um, maybe just uh, moving on quickly now, I think um, uh, Philippe has not joined us yet. Um, so maybe if we could move on to, to, to Leslie now um, and get your um, expert view. Um, you've had a look at the report, heard some of the conversation. What, what is your takeaway? What is your um, uh, uh, view that you can share with us, your expertise that you could share with us at the moment around this report? So over to you, uh, Leslie. I'm muting. Um, I, I'm... Uh honored really to uh, have been invited to contribute. So thank you so much for that. Um, Carol, I'm still, I'm still slightly mesmerized by the poster behind you, wondering whether it is a call for gender equality um, and also wondering how I might redraw it. Um, so if I may just mention that and get rid of that thought. Um, I think this report is potentially amazing, but I think it's absolutely critical that it should move beyond the status of just another report, because we've been writing reports for uh, decades, literally. Um, I, I can name so many um, that are so wise and eloquent uh, this would certainly be amongst the wisest and the most eloquent, but nonetheless, reports are not cutting it for the world in crisis um, that we inhabit. Um, just to very briefly sketch in what is Think Equal um, and why is it actually a very apt example uh, for this milieu and, and this symposium? Um, Think Equal's mission is to bring the missing subject, what we consider to be the most important subject in the world, social and emotional learning. Teaching our children, giving them the foundation concretely for pro-social brain development and positive outcomes in their lives focusing primarily on the early years because you can only build a foundation once. And we believe that humanity is beyond stupid and blind if it continues to deal with this, the fallout instead of tackling our issues at their root cause. And we actually call on education ministers because we have chosen this, it's a very narrow funnel um, uh, that, that, that we um, are focused on, but it's, I believe, the most impactful um, for all aspects of sustainable development of people and planet. Um, we teach very concretely through books and lesson plans which are prescriptive, they have to be because the workforce is not yet appraised of this new subject, nor knows how to curate materials for it, or even what empathy and critical thinking really mean, let alone knows how to teach it. So we provide the prescriptive tools for early years teachers to mediate 25 competencies and skills, not the four cute choices of the World Economic Forum for 21st century skills or social and emotional learning, which all happen coincidentally to begin with the letter C and are utterly inadequate, but 25 critical, crucial competencies and skills without which our children cannot possibly grow up into dignified human beings who respect the dignity of others. Um, why we are so apt for this discussion is that our mission is to bring this new subject alongside numeracy and literacy in our broken education system, which is not fit for purpose, not just to bring them along in some shape or form, but to make them, to make this new subject compulsory. We say to education ministers, 
if you have a duty of care that you take seriously towards your young and uh, vulnerable citizens, how can you possibly deem it to be compulsory for them to learn numeracy and literacy, but it's either arbitrary or optional for them to learn how to value another human being and how to lead healthy relationships. We say this cannot be optional and at our own peril do we keep it so. So basically to the report now, what is missing for me? And by the way, we've been successful and continue to be. We've reached 94,000 children in 16 countries in just three years across six continents. We are working in private public partnerships. We've partnered with UNICEF in two countries. Um, we have partnered with UNESCO, um, Teach for All, I could go on, I won't. We've got amazing academic partners in the Yale Center for Emotional Intelligence, um, et cetera, I won't go on. Sir Ken Robinson was, I'm sad to say, he left us all too soon three months ago, um, left, left us all. Um, he was our founding partner um, and we have a, a committee of world experts in social and emotional learning who have contributed so magnificently to this concrete program, which is also a movement. Um, now, back to the report. For me, what's missing from the report and is always missing from any report is a blueprint for action, is, is not just an exhortation to action, which at least this report does make, some don't. Some are content to simply sit and contemplate theoretical um, structures and possibilities. The five areas in the report, we really do have to examine, I believe, because they use words like leverage the power of, build cap capabilities, develop models, promote and foster. We're in an emergency situation. We have 2030 looming. And we who serve the 2030 agenda and the SDGs, and Think Equal, by the way, has been designed to address 10 of the 17 directly in its learning, um, should be using words now like implement, replicate, scale, mandate, partner, and at, at, at the very widest collaborate. We have managed to work successfully with education ministers, and I'm just going to end by giving you a, a, a few examples of where we've done this successfully. Um, in Mexico, we are working with the state education ministry of Guerrero, which is the most violent state in Mexico. We have started at scale, with, or at some scale, with 400 classrooms, 200 indigenous, 200 non-indigenous. Guerrero State is now asking us to come into every single early years classroom in the state. And the only thing we're missing is resources. South Africa, we've just partnered with the ECDO, Eastern Cape Education Department, uh, Temba Kojana, a visionary se uh, secretary general equivalent of Minister of Education provincially, uh, the Eastern Cape, we're going in to transform 94,200 children in 2,350 classrooms like that, because this program has been designed to replicate and scale. We can no longer sit back and develop things over um, uh, decades and centuries. In India, we've been invited to go into 15,000 Anganwadis, which are early year settings. That's 525,000 children. We're not yet funded there. Um, we are half funded in South Africa and are looking for some balance of funding there. Le Leslie, excuse me. I, I don't want yeah. to interrupt your flow because I love your passion, um, but, but we have a little time. Um, uh, Can I finish just, just the one? May I one, just yes, finish? Quickly. Just you, may, you may indeed, you may indeed. Thank you. Deborah Domingo, Education Minister of Belize, has mandated Think Equal to every single three to six year old child in Belize. We are going at the end of this month to train every single early years teacher in Belize. 
The next generation in Belize, yes, it'll take 10 to 15 years. The next generation in Belize will all be uh, members of the Catalyst 20, 2050 by then. This is doable, but we have to demand action. Theory is not enough. Thank you for your patience. I'm sorry, I know I do talk at length. We, 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 we all do because we're passionate people about this whole area. So totally, totally respectful. We have to kind of move on. Um, very quickly, I'd like to just come back to both Karina and, and, and Carol here, particularly Carol for us, maybe just in terms of this issue about um, another report standing, uh, ending in the, the commissioner's desk. Um, actually, this one is, is, we were all saying, is very, very important. How do we make sure that this uh, gets into the, onto the desk of decision makers? How do we make sure that this uh, report is seen? How do we use this as a blueprint for action? So some of the questions Leslie's were answering. And then Katerina, if you could maybe come in after that. Philip has now joined us, so um, he'll come back into us. So perhaps both of you could just respond to that. Just very briefly, please. Thank you. Carol. Uh, the, the answer is very simple by organizing discussions like today, first of all. <laughs> that, <laughs> hello? No. That... no. We can hear you. We can hear you. We can, we can hear you, Carl. Ah, okay. The, there seemed to be a delay. No, on you go. Just on you go. Continue, please. Okay, okay, no, no. So uh, for me, it's, it's very crucial to go in interaction in discussions like today. Um, a second thing is that that we, we have a lot of, um, let's say we organize a lot of important, important, uh, I think, uh, interesting uh, meetings in the run up to the social economy action plan. Uh, and the most important one is, is the European social economy summit. I don't know if you heard about the summit um, yet, but it's uh, it was originally scheduled to take place in Mannheim in uh, 10 days. Um, unfortunately, we had to cancel it and we had to reorganize it uh, in a digital manner. But still, we have the ambition to have a physical meeting next year in May. Um, I will immediately uh, share the link uh, in, in the chat box, uh, but we have every month um, an, a digital event that uh, discusses specific topics. So there is still um, uh, space to, to, to participate every month and there is uh, still space to uh, come, for example, with some specific topics and to suggest some workshops. Um, if you wish, I can try to bring you in contact with the actual organizers in Mannheim and I can also discuss because there you have, of course, a huge reach out to the to the whole social economy ecosystem, let's say, at European level. So that's a very interesting way. Of course, I will share the report with my colleagues, but I think discussions like today are very crucial and also to, to bring the report to the discussion fora uh, that are organized today with, with these digital uh, events. It's quite easy to... to to be present or to, to let's say, take part in, in certain discussions. But of course, you need to know where to go. So this is a bit what I what I might respond. Um, of course, I would recommend you also to, to send it officially towards the commission um, so that we can um, that we can file it and that we can also send it to other services. Um, we have, for example, within the commission, a specific task force that brings together all the directorate generals. Um, and policy officers that are uh, responsible are related to social economy files. I will also chair this report within this inter-service group within the commission. And a last point I would like to um, give you as an opportunity, it's our uh, HECES expert group, um, which is a designated expert group for uh, six years, um, representatives from every uh, member state, but also private experts. Uh, we will have a meeting in December with this expert group, and we will also send this report um, to them as an interest uh, and, a, and a, um, let's say, a preparation uh, for the next uh, group. I hope that helps. Thank you. Yes, that's very practical, very helpful indeed. Um, thank you for that. Uh, Katerina, do you want to come in very quickly, and then we'll move to, to, to Philip. So Katerina, very quickly, please. Thank you so much, Mel. So I just want to like share, share, 
two, three sentences on um, Leslie's point of like, moving from talking and report writing to action. And I think this is something that we've, uh, as a group, discussed quite intensively. Um, and what we've come to, to agree on is that the role of this report is to be a thought starter and a discussion starter to make exactly conversations like the one we're having today happen in contexts around the globe. And for that reason, we've probably deliberately chosen to remain a bit more abstract on some elements to make it applicable across the globe rather than to a very specific setting that we might be um, coming from. So that's, I guess, a bit of the explanation as to why we've chosen the setting that we're in. And we've aimed to include as many case examples as possible to serve as inspiration um, for readers to then make it their own, start their own discussions in their local context and think about how these case examples could look like, could be implemented um, in their local um, well surroundings. Um, since we, we were a bit skeptical that a one size fits all and you have to implement this list of 10 things everywhere would be the appropriate manner. So um, the aim was more to, to give inspiration and give a couple of ideas that can then spark more conversations. And with that, I think we can go to questions. No, no, we're now moving to, to uh, thank you, Catherine, for that um, um, uh, explanation. Uh, Philip has, has now joined us for Philip Armedia from the, who's president of the Portugal uh, Social Innovation. Uh, Philip, if we could just turn to you uh, briefly, because I'm very keen that we get people's questions in. Um, but um, I'd just be uh, very interested to get your quick uh, reflections uh, on, on the report. And if you've been able to hear some of the conversation that's gone on, what your thoughts are there. So over to you uh, uh, briefly, please, Philip. Thank you so much, Mel. And um, I'm sorry to everyone I arrived late. I was stuck in an official event with the ministry and a lot of different authorities and I couldn't get out in time. So I'm very, very sorry I missed the first half an hour of discussion. Well, uh, my perspective on this, this report is um, um, it, uh, uh, I would say that in a nutshell, it touches exactly the same areas that we're developing in Portugal. Each of the five actions, uh, action areas uh, that are identified in the report, we are doing that in Portugal step by step. I will provide some examples. Uh, however, it's a, it's a struggle and I will share with you our challenges. But Portugal Social Innovation is a public initiative. So it's a government initiative in Portugal that mobilizes European structural funds to finance social innovation projects and uh, develop the social investment markets. So um, um, it, it's, it's, we already have a central national public policy for social innovation in Portugal. And by, by having that, we are doing, concerning, considering the first action area, um, open information. We developed an online open access platform it, it is called onevalue.gov.pt, where we present the unitary public investment in different social areas. That is something that we've been collected in different areas of the government. And the idea is to create an open online free access platform with it when, where we can share how much the government is spending by person or by event in different areas from health to education to, to, to social protection justice and employment. So this is a first step to provide open information so we can evolve to a more ground-based um, outcomes contracting process in the future. We must compare the value of the contracts that we are doing with the civil society organizations with the value of spending of, of public uh, budget spend, spending. So we have that first step. It was very hard to to put it to work, but now we have it and we will try in the near future to um, 
make it more deep. Then you have the capacity building action. That's something that we have in Portugal Social Innovation. We have a financing, a financing instrument exactly for making capacity building. We have a project of capacity building inside public administration, which was quite um, an, uh, um, uh, a failure until now. Uh, we tried with no app, um, real success, but we are trying to do that. We are we having a capacity building program for entrepreneurs and for social organizations. That is working fine, but within public administration is much more harder. We have four financing instruments, one financial instrument. So we have funding models adjusted to the needs of the market. Um, all these instruments uh, assume the development of partnerships between investors, public or private, social, uh, um, social organizations and the public sector. So we are promoting collaboration as well. No social innovation project is approved without this partnership between the different sectors. And now we're starting to work with some ministries in order to embed the, the high potential projects that we are financing in public policy. We are namely working with the Ministry of Labor and Employment, Employment and, and Social Security. And uh, we are moving on from ministry to ministry, trying to uh, share our experience because Portugal Social Innovation is actually, an, I would say, an open innovation lab where we um, uh, experience uh, this kind of proposals from the civil society. We, are, we have 579 projects so far, more than 110 million euros of investment, of financing, uh, within which we have 35 million euros of social investment from other uh, organizations that are matching their funds with ours. So it's a blended finance solution. Um, it's been, it, it was hard to put it to work, but now it's working very well. And we are on the edge of trying to um, understand if we are going to have uh, Portugal Social Innovation 2.0. And that's something that is not taken for granted. And this is also we have all this working in Portugal and quite well. Um, that's something that I have to sell to the government every day. So it's a struggle. It's a struggle. I feel like I'm a I'm the representative of a whole ecosystem inside the government, like an infiltrated agent, agent that is always trying to push this agenda forward and trying to uh, make sure that no one dismisses it. And uh, but but I but there are some champions in the government, so let's hope that the future it's brighter. Sorry for taking so long, but this is the what we are doing in Portugal, and this is completely aligned with these five action areas that were identified in the report. So I, I, I fully recognize these, these proposals in what we're doing in Portugal. So thank you very much, uh, Philippe, for, for, for your uh, response to the report. Um, and it's very good always, I think, to know that, that, that we have a friend inside the government and who we can work with. I think the challenge here and the report brings us out is, is how, how do we break, begin to work together better? We're, we're working towards system change and so the, the, the challenge for us all is, okay, with somebody like you inside government and social entrepreneurs outside, how do we come together to build what we want to do together? So that's, that's one of the challenges. So Luke, thank you very much for, for your work, obviously, but, but also for your uh, contribution just now. So we have a little time now. We, we are a little behind schedule. Um, I'm very keen to hear from um, uh, everybody in terms of questions. I'm sure there are some, and uh, uh, please put some comments in, in, in the chat function. So over to you now, who has um, a, a, a question? You can either put something in the chat or, 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 or wave at me. Um, if I could see the, the whole gallery, that would be good. Anybody with, a, with a, a question or a comment that they wish to make? Nobody? I don't believe there's nobody. I can't believe it. No, on this call, there's nobody got any, <laughs> any, any, any questions or comments to make. Uh, but we can re return to the speakers and we can certainly speak. Um, I appreciate, I've seen in the, um, in the chat function, some people saying it, they're finding it difficult to kind of uh, uh, orientate because they haven't seen the report. I think that the, if you refer really to the slide that's there, 
just in terms of where the report is, it's getting, it's, it's getting to the, the stage now where it's going to be uh, ready at the end of this week, the beginning of the next week, and it will be shared. And then the plan is to launch it later, later in the year. So everyone will get a, 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 a look at it. But, but concentrating on these, this slide there, building that ecosystem with these five areas uh, is, is really a, 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 a point really that, that's crucial here. Um, but uh, again, I would say that, you know, one of the, the issues that's coming out of here is how do we make sure that this isn't just another report? Um, having been one person that's been able to see the report, I know it's a really, really good report, and I'm not a great fan necessarily of reports, for those of you who know me. So this is a really good report. It's really, really important. If we are going to achieve uh, the, the systemic change that we want to do, then we have to be as social entrepreneurs connected and working with government in an effective way. And um, uh, this report provides some indication about how, how, how we move forward. So it's very, very important. Um, Katharina. You're on mute, Katharina. Yeah, just saw. So in terms of Q&A, um, I see we've gotten our first question, but also wanted to say, if you feel there's something that we haven't touched upon at all, that should be in there, um, feel free to put that out there as well. So we don't necessarily need to stick to the five areas. If you feel there's another element that's important, um, that would be interesting to hear as well for us. Okay, thank you for that. Um, I see this one question from, from, from Charlotte in, 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 the, in the chat function. Um, in which way would the people behind the report, like members of Catalyst 2030, to, like, like members of Catalyst 2030, to support its use, raising awareness, communications? And I think that's going to be part of um, uh, um, future discussions about how we do that. But, but perhaps, um, uh, uh, Katharina, you would like to just say, kind of say what you would like people to do when this report's ready. How would you like people in Catalyst 2030 and social entrepreneurs to be involved in its dissemination and promotion? Sure, and I think um, Leslie also wants to speak, so um, let's make sure we, we get her in as well. Um, on dissemination, what we're planning is to have a larger launch with um, this conversation in large setting in January. And we would love all of you to, once that has happened, um, A, share the link to the report more widely. You will receive the preprint uh, via email as soon as it's ready. And then as soon as it's officially launched, please feel free to send it to everyone you know and advertise it. Um, there will be tweets about it from the um, Catalyst media platforms. Um, feel free to retweet, share, like, um, whatever one does on social media. Um, but I think most powerfully, talk to your colleagues, your professional contacts about it and, and make sure that we, we can broaden this conversation. Okay, um, I see another question in the chat uh, from Steve. Can um, I just contribute one thing, please, before we lose the point from earlier? Sure. Uh, I think, you know, the question was, what, what else can we do? I mean, we've already lost it a little bit, but it was in, in, in the region of what do we feel we're missing from those five areas? Uh, I don't know to what extent there is still time to change things within this report or you know if, if you're looking for input that in the next week or two before the report is actually finalized and published might be incorporated i will simply repeat again but in in a much more um a, a brief form i would like to see a sixth segment put into that graphic wheel of those five areas even if just the word implement is put in there, something that, that sets up in the executive summary, in the kernel of this report, the expectation of action, even that would set it apart from other reports that languish on shelves. And I think Katarina made a fantastically persuasive point about using examples and case studies in the report. I think someone should trawl through it and ensure that it includes primarily case studies of policy makers or government ministers um, or, or, or personnel who have actually committed to new policy, changed policy. And that's why I went to such lengths to, to describe the four examples where we've managed to do that. Someone like Deborah Domingo, 
should be a heroine to us all because she has flown in the face of globalized indifference and apathy and actually changed policy for her government, her country. We should be holding these examples up as what can be done, what has been done. And we shouldn't limit that by saying one size fits all doesn't work. Let me tell you with Think Equal, one size fits all has been proven to work with adaptation and collaboration. We're in 16 countries as different as Australia and South Africa. Sri Lanka and Mexico. So it does work, it can work, and we have to make it work. That is what we are here for. Thanks. Thank, thank you, thank you, Leslie. Um, your, your, your point is, is, is well made. I mean, certainly, uh, Katrina will, will, will have a look at that. Uh, maybe just to continue this conversation, there are a couple of questions, but Carol, can I, uh, I see you can maybe come back to you um, on this point? Sure. Thank you very much. Um, I, I don't want to uh, invade into into the report or to change the setting at all, but um, there was one question. Uh, if I can make one critical remark um, up uh, next to the very positive remarks I had already made, I think when you do such an exercise about about systematic change, um, about um, societal behavior on how we might uh, promote more social entrepreneurship to obtain certain societal change. It's uh, usually that always analyzes the current um, systematic approaches. It analyzes, for example, how social innovation works. Um, it analyzes what, what a, a business uh, model could bring or how it could interact, etc. cetera. But, um, and now I take a bit my head from DG Grow, it's more the economic aspect. Um, where is the position of the client in this whole story? And with a client, I don't only mean the economic client, so the one who will buy in the end, because in the end, a social enterprise is selling a service or a good. Um, just like any other business. Um, so therefore, it should not only be a very nice product in terms of societal or ecological uh, added value, but it should also be marketable. Otherwise, it will not survive in uh, the economy unless we think that um, this product is an essential good that should be supported by the state. That's something else. Then we can be a service provider for the state, which is also an important subset of the social economy. But this distinction between these two is, for me, in almost every report on social economy, usually not enough stressed. Um, and what I mean by that is that we should uh, start way more looking at things from the essential demand on the market or the demand for a certain service from a client or also a target group. A target group, for example, somebody with a disability that has a uh, need for mobility, for accessibility, that's for me also a client. So they need also a certain type of service. And this is the, 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 the crucial point in the whole story. When you analyze ecosystems for social entrepreneurship, they are usually talking about the ecosystem itself, but not where it should serve for. And, and therefore, this customer journey, to use another fancy word in this whole field of uh, methodology on social innovation, is, is, is a very crucial aspect. And that is maybe a little bit missing in this report, even though I know very well it's not the goal of the report. And so I don't want to change this. But sometimes it's very important that you don't a quote, for example, Tadej Slapnik, because he was a high positioned uh, politician in the Slovenian government. He did a lot for blockchain, for social innovation, to match tech to social good, etc. It's very relevant, but sometimes it's also very relevant to quote really like how such a, a social service or how a specific social enterprise changed the life of an end user, of, of just a citizen, of uh, somebody who buys a product and believes when I buy this product, I have a very qualitative product, but I also know that I changed the world somehow. Uh, I don't want to exaggerate, but I do good by buying this product, but it's also a very good product, so I'm confident to buy it for eternity, let's say. So this is a bit the approach that, that very often is missing also in many of these reports. So it's an economic aspect, a client, consumer, how you change also behavior of consumers, for example, aspect, and also the pure, um, let's say, service for a target group that is, is beyond the market. Um, so that I will keep it for that, but maybe some interesting things to, to keep in mind. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you for that observation. And I see Katerina with a thumbs up there. Um, we're, we're moving to the end here. I, I wonder if um, Sarah's on the call from the, from the French government. I'd be interested very quickly if you um, if you have a view um, on this discussion and um, you know with, with your government hat on where you think this conversation is going. Um, if um, I haven't taken you by surprise, if you could kind of add uh, uh, um, your comments, I'd be grateful. Yeah. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, yeah, I think this report is very useful. Um, like one of, one of the speakers said, um, you know, we, we need to adapt and cooperate. And, and sometimes, uh, yeah, we pick one policy and try to make it in our own government and, and see how we can work. Uh, but it's really good when we have, when we receive, you know, report like the one that, that will be out, uh, because it's always to have new ideas and, and see how we can co collaborate. And so this is why I was putting in the chat that, um, you know, when you are a government, it's, it's you know, better when, when a report is coming out from a direct, uh, you know, person that you already know. Um, so that's why we're making a call for Catalyst members that have already uh, direct contacts with governments, um, because it's better than that it doesn't come from, from outside. We you know, there's many, many social entrepreneurs in the world. Uh, so when you already know them, uh, you can have the trust. I think the trust building with social entrepreneurs is really important. Uh, when you're in a government, uh, but we're always looking for new ideas. Um, you know, I, I think that's something that the Schwab was working on and, and many others on the uh, social entrepreneurs in the public sector. Um, I know that Philippe <laughs> talked about it. It's always a fight within the governments uh, to convince other people and other ministries and ministers to work on social entrepreneurship and believe in social innovation. Um, so the more we are, the better it is. Um, the commission, the European commission is, is really helpful helpful on that. And, and, and I've look, worked a lot with Carol and, and his team on that. Um, so yeah, the more we are, the better it is. Uh, the more examples um, that we talked about, the better um, for new policies. So yeah, that's why I'm making, I'm making the call. And to have more governments working on that and really change their policies and also support the one that are already working on, on social innovation and for social entrepreneurs and social economy as a whole. And so that would be my, my word on that. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Sarah, for that uh, uh, input. We're, we're really on the edge of time, but we did start a couple of minutes late. So um, I, I saw that was one uh, point very quickly. Um, Steve, if, if you could make it about access to capital, um, and then I'll sure. come back to, to Katerina. So if you could just be very brief, please, I apologize. We are really short of time. That's okay. My video is a bit um, um, stop and starty. So can everyone hear me? You can, okay. Yes, so yeah, yes. so I wanted just to, to comment on Carol and on Leslie. Um, Carol mentioned that he wasn't gonna talk about the uh, uh, new funding models or, or access to capital um, because the, um, the the union is doing a, a lot on that issue. Um, and Leslie was talking about a, a number of projects that they're not funded in. And what I would say is really, you know, although education is central to everything, I think finance and economics is uh, as well. And we really need system innovation uh, to, um, to change how risk capital flows to a variety of system innovators that themselves are what I would call macro level catalysts. Uh, so take this report, um, you know, Leslie talks about um, it, it shouldn't just be a report, it's got to be turned into action. But, but really that report needs to be turned into a program and that program needs to be properly funded because everything through what Carol was saying about um, the the, um, the the consumer level uh, uh, purchasing a product that they feel is going to make a difference, absolutely that's critical. But you know that subject alone, you know, is is all about brand. It's about business models. It's about sales. It's about marketing. It's about all the things that great and amazing, you know, for profit models actually do. And and we have to bring that and the way of funding them to the you know the the so enterprise and the social sector including the not-for-profit or hybrid models so what i would say is you know the the central uh, uh, uh um, function for the team catalyst uh, 2030 etc should be around raising five or ten or twenty million uh, euros to turn this into a two three year action program 
um, rather than, than just a report. That would make it meaningful. And it's really about joining the dots. I mean, I've worked on a, a, a big systemic idea to create a what we call a sustainable innovation development bank for many, many years. And I've met more resistance than uh, it, it's possible to uh, uh, explain in, in many years. But what, I'm, um, what I've had recently is some breakthroughs. The first steps we're, we're launching is, is something called fundingtheglobalgoals.tv, which we hope to launch properly early next year. And it's really about joining the dots uh, on uh, all forms of finance and all of the SDGs and, and driving uh, um, the, the, the understanding and the spotlight kind of system innovation that we, we require. So let, while Leslie talked about individuals, it's often teams and projects, and we have to be careful not to sort of uh, uh, lord rock stars um, as happens in the, uh, uh, the conventional world. But what we have to do is, is kind of uh, uh, really talk about the journey and the trajectory and recognizing that all innovation doesn't look perfect. It doesn't look uh, ideal in the moment. It's only when you look at it over time and the trajectory that you see how it's often a collaborative effort. And we should, you know, champion those collaborations and we should champion those collaborators and drivers. And while the founders are often key, you know, um, without those supporters, they, they get nowhere. So that's what I would say, and reinventing finance is where uh, one of the areas it starts, but doing it, you know, so in a, a form of capitalism that's fit for, for modern times, you know, a, and fit for a broader society. So I just wanted to throw those things in. I think, you hey. know, I, I'm really excited to read what you, what, uh, when it comes out and, and thank yeah. you for, for, for all your inputs. Thank, thank you for your contribution, Steve. I'm sorry we have to move on, but that's very, very valuable. The whole area uh, 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 around financing and, and you know, us as social entrepreneurs as against systemic change and so on, um, issues working in teams. So thanks very much for raising them and they'll be taken on. Um, I just want to kind of finish in a second, unless Katarina, do you want to come back and say anything? Because I'm just going to finish up. Okay, thank you. We just slightly over time. Okay, I do, I, I do apologize for that. I'd really like to thank, first of all, Katarina for coming on and explaining the report. Thank you to Matthias, Carol, Philip, and Leslie for their fantastic contributions and for you uh, in terms of the questions and your comments in the chat. What happens now is there's another two expert uh, uh, panels will be uh, uh, um, taking all these comments on board. Um, the report in the first is going to be available at the beginning of next week and then there's going to be a launch. Critical for everybody though, and it's come up a number of times, is, is getting this report high profile and out there and there'll be a media plan and comms plan that will come on the back of this report, which we'll be letting you all know about so that you will have um, a part to play in getting this report into, into the, uh, onto the desk, into the, under the noses of the relevant people, and that will be happening uh, shortly. So um, in, incredibly grateful again for yeah. everybody. So, sorry to interrupt you. Let me just ask you one thing. Is it possible when the report is uh, finished and launched, to organize, um, um, I would say, um, a meeting with uh, high-level officials, governments, or, or uh, ministries here in Portugal, just to present the report uh, live, not just the paper, but organizing yes. a, a meeting to do that. Is it so, possible? So, so thank you for coming in. Yes, is the answer. I mean, I think we okay. want to do. I mean, I can't say specifically practically. But that okay. is exactly the sort of thing that we want to do with this report. It's so, okay getting into the media, but actually getting it in a discussion forum or however you want to do it with your okay. government and any other governments is exactly what we want. So thank you for that. But we have to finish, unfortunately, there's never enough time. Um, uh, I would like to just thank you all again very, very much. Um, this is a very, very uh, constructive session and we look forward to the report coming up. So thank you all very much again. Bye just now.